Hi folks, welcome back to Physics with Captain Rod. The purpose of this video is to provide an example of uh, a kinematic type of problem involving rotation. So what we're looking at here, you know, imagine we've got this um, disc-shaped geometry free to rotate about an axis through its center. It's got a 0.4 meter radius in this example. Here's just some point P labeled on its uh, edge. And we're going to imagine that at t equals zero, this object is rotating at one radian per second uh, counterclockwise. And we're going to define that um, this as theta equals zero. So I guess I'm measuring theta along this axis here. And we're going to assume that in the problem that we have an angular acceleration given that's equal to 0.3 times theta in units of radian per second uh, squared. So again, this is not a constant angular acceleration problem. In this case, uh, in this problem, the angular acceleration is actually increasing as theta increases. And what we're going to try to do here is we're going to find the, an acceleration vector for the point P after theta has uh, increased by one uh, revolution. So, you know, as this thing has went around, the point P, you know, has done a complete circle. At the instant shown, if I were to draw acceleration vectors, okay, P is going to have a tangential acceleration, which is going to point maybe something like this. I'm going to draw my acceleration vectors in red. Okay. And tangential acceleration vectors for rotational motion about a fixed axis is equal to r times alpha, where alpha is the angular acceleration. So that's going to be a pretty easy thing, I think, to calculate. All right. In addition to the tangential acceleration, P is also moving and undergoing a uh, circular path, so we're also going to have an acceleration vector uh, inward um, called a centripetal acceleration vector. So I'm going to go ahead and draw that, maybe something like this, towards the center of curvature. So we're going to have both a tangential acceleration and a centripetal acceleration. Now at this point, um, I don't know anything about their relative magnitudes, so I've just kind of, you know, guess to distance and guess to distance. I suspect the centripetal will end up being larger in magnitude than the tangential. Centripetal accelerations, uh, just by their nature, very quickly become the dominant accelerations in a problem. All right. I'm going to go ahead now and uh, work on calculating the tangential first. Should be pretty easy to do. I think we can just do it with a just a quick numerical calculation. The radius of curvature, 0.4 meters. The angular acceleration is given by this function, which is 0.3 times theta. I'll put this in brackets, where here theta is going to be one revolution. However, you'll notice units here, this 0.3 um, and the theta, and we want this in radian per second squared. So after one revolution, that would be 2 pi radians. And again, this has units of our radian over second squared. And this is now just a, whoops, and again, that's not an r, that's not a distance, that was a unit, a radian. And I guess I wrote that unit out front here, so let me do this. I'll just put the units out here, radian over second squared for the uh, angular acceleration. And if I run a value here, I'm just running this through a calculator here, I get about 0.75 meter per second per second. Again, dimensionally, when you take a radian over second squared times a meter, you get a meter radian per second squared, but a radian is a dimensionless concept. So this guy right here we know, 0.75 meter per second squared. All right, now we'll start working on the centripetal. All right, let's start with this guy here. So we have alpha, the angular acceleration, and that's 0.3 times theta in units of radian over second squared. Now remember what the angular acceleration is. It's the rate at which your angular velocity changes. So that's a d omega dt. Now you'll notice at this point I've got three variables here, theta, t, and the angular velocity. I can rewrite this with two variables by applying the chain rule of differentiation here. The derivative d omega dt can be written d omega d theta times d theta dt. Now d theta dt is what we call the angular velocity here. So the next line, we've got 0.3 times theta is equal to the angular velocity times d omega dt. 
I'm sorry, d theta, not dt, d theta. So what I've done is rewritten this uh, derivative in terms of theta and uh, the angular velocity. Okay, and this is pretty easily solved by separation. You know, the next line is going to read 0.3 theta d theta equals the angular velocity times the derivative of the angular velocity. This is going to integrate to 0.3 theta um, squared over 2. Let's see what I did here. That's going to equal omega squared over 2 plus a constant. Now, when theta is equal to 0, we know that the angular velocity is 1 rad per second. So when we apply that condition, this is now going to read 0 equals 1 squared over 2 plus a constant. So our constant is equal to minus 1 half here. So I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this equation, including the constant. Do this on the left. So we're going to have 0.3 over 2 theta squared is going to equal omega squared over 2 minus 1 half. And the next step here is to solve for the angular velocity after this thing has went around one time. So if we do that, this is going to read 0.3 over 2 times theta squared equals the angular velocity squared over 2 minus 1 half. If we solve this for the angular velocity, what I get out of this, uh, I get 3.58 rad per second. And here's what I wanted this for. Centripetal acceleration can be written a couple of different ways. Uh, v squared over r. It's also equal to r omega squared or r theta dot squared. And when I run 0.4 times the 3.58 uh, squared, I get 5.1 out of this thing. About 5.1 uh, meter over second squared. And this is the centripetal acceleration term. So uh, the way I worded this problem, I wanted an acceleration vector. So I'll go ahead and just write my results right here. So my acceleration vector for P. Now, we could uh, mess around with components, and then I'm just going to do this in the easiest way possible. I'm going to just uh, define a tangential direction this way, a radial direction outward, and then I'm going to say that the acceleration vector is 0.75 meter over second squared in the tangential direction, and it's 5.1 meter over second squared in the minus r hat direction. Generally speaking, you do r, uh, outward positive when you look at r hat vectors. If we wanted the acceleration magnitude, we would pythag this, but uh, I think I'm just going to call that good right there. Um, so yeah, I, I hope that this video uh, helps kind of demonstrate how to do kind of a kinematic problem for a rotation. Have a great day.